This is Solve It for Kids. Hello, my amazing and curious friends. My name is Jennifer, the Dean of All Things STEM Dean, and this is Solve It for Kids, the podcast that gives kids and families a peek inside the real world of scientists, engineers, and experts as they solve problems in their jobs using creativity, cooperation, and critical thinking. And now please welcome to the show my podcast partner, Galactic Space Geek, Jeff Ganya. Hello, Jennifer, and hello, listeners. I am super excited about today's episode because we get to talk to an expert in the iconic image of what makes an astronaut an astronaut. Oh, this one is going to be so amazing. What problem are we solving today? How do you dress an astronaut? How do you dress an astronaut? Oh my gosh, this is going to be so much fun. Who is our guest today, Jeff? Our guest today is the one and only fabulous Sharon McDougall, former NASA spacesuit technician. Welcome to the show, Sharon. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Well, we are thrilled to have you. I mean, you get to do the coolest thing. Dress the astronauts, right? Um, I know. They were so lucky to have me (laughs) suiting them up. 100% right. Yes. That has to be done properly. Yes. Exactly. And I was the woman for the job. Okay. So did you always know as a kid? that you wanted to grow up to dress astronauts? Well, Jen, I used to lie in the yard on a grassy knoll and stare (laughs) up into the stars and say, one day I will work with the space program. That's fun. Not at all. Oh! (laughs) So how did you get into this? How did you get into this? (laughs) So unconventional. (laughs) It came to me. I had no idea what I was going to do when I was in school. And then my knight in shining armor came and spoke to my high school class, Air Force recruiter. (laughs) And he came and told us all about all the amazing things we could do in the Air Force. They paid for us to go to college, which was the main thing I was really looking for. Right. But then they gave me this amazing career. And I kept saying, I'll go next semester. I'll go next semester. I never went one semester. (laughs) I was traveling the world in support of the aircraft and the pilots. And I mean, I was just having a blast. An 18-year-old kid. Right out of Mississippi, never been anywhere. And all of a sudden, I'm in Japan at 18. Wow. (laughs) That's amazing. It was amazing. But it started off in the military. I was an aerospace physiology specialist. Okay. And that's where I learned how to work on the pressure suits, was in the Air Force. Oh. The SR-71 Blackbird. Y'all know about that bad girl, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. And the U-2 reconnaissance. Both of those are reconnaissance aircraft. So they flew so high and so fast, they had to wear the pressure suits. Yep. Absolutely. So that's why I got my training was working on those suits. And then I was in the Air Force seven years. Mm-hmm. And when I decided to separate, I was struggling, as a lot of veterans do. Right. And I was about to reenlist when a friend that was in the Air Force with me prior had already gone on. And he had been out here in Houston working with the space program for a few months. And they had an immediate opening. And so he found me and contacted me and told wow. me. Wow. No. That's kidding. how I got the job. So I, it's not, it wasn't like I always wanted to work there. I was looking and trying to get out there, it just... It was meant to be, though. It, it was, was meant to be. Absolutely. Because be. when you got into the Air Force, I can't imagine you were looking down the list of jobs looking for <laughs> uh, high-pressure suits. Oh, yeah, there it is. Check that box. And guess what, Jeff? You don't even pick your job when you're under service. They pick Correct. it. They're That's... going by your test scores. They look at what you were good at. And, of course, what they need to feel as well, not just how good your test scores were. Right. Sure. So the first job they wanted me to take was air traffic controller. Oh, wow. But they wanted me to come right away. That's when President Reagan was in office and the air traffic controllers were on strike. I know y'all probably too young. Oh, no, no, no. (laughs) I remember that. Yes, yes, yes. So my principal, and let me show you how some people were set in place for me. My high school principal, even though I had the grades and I could have graduated earlier, she didn't want to set that precedence. And so she said no. And I'm glad she did because oh. everybody, nope, they wouldn't be flying anymore because I would have crashed every plane into each other. 
<laughs> so we would all be driving everywhere. Oh, if I my goodness. Well, that's okay. probably a good thing then. Yes. Yeah. And so the I next love job that, that you came can... up for, you know, that would be after I graduated high school was aerospace physiology. That fit wow. my rules. So that's what I took. And I went, to, I had to go to basic training, which, you know, most militaries call it boot camp. We call it. Basic yep. Training. yep. I that's went to the so Naval awesome. Academy. We called it plebe summer. So yeah. Oh, did you? Okay, same. good, good. Yeah, well, all the same thing. So you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Careful yeah. you into? We into service? Oh, yes. What branch? Air Force. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't tell me? <laughs> we were talking about other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We are Air Force kid. Yes. Yes. So I love how you are connecting those dots for our listeners that... Mm-hmm you're not necessarily going to know how the dots connect. Yeah. But if you let things happen and you make good choices and you recognize those opportunities when they come, that very good things can happen. So I want to know what it was like when you first switched over from those military pilot yes. high pressure suits into NASA astronaut high pressure suits. Was that an easy switch or was there a lot of changes? It was the easiest, like, just like walking to the next room. Oh, okay. let me tell you, many people don't know this unless they've listened to me, you know, speak. Sure. The pressure suits came from the Air Force. NASA yes. got the suits from the Air okay. Force. Okay. Yep. Remember the gold color suits that the SR-71 pilots wore? If you look at the old astronaut pictures, right. they were in that same suit until they made a few adjustments and made it orange. But it's the same thing. Okay. Only thing that was different was the G-suit part. That right. was okay. the part that was different. Same thing. It's like the only thing I had All to do right. was learn their policies and procedures when I got there, their culture. Right. Yes. Gotcha. Like, I, I hit the ground running. As soon as I got there, it was like, boop, 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 boop. Oh, that's fantastic. Like, had, like well, nothing, nothing changed. <laughs> so for while Jeff and I know what pressure suits are, it's yes. possible that our listeners do not. Could you talk to us a little bit about what they are and what they do? Most definitely. So whoever's listening, I, want, I don't want to say kids because I'm sure maybe some adults too. Yes. Listeners. So the pretty orange suit you see the astronauts wear for launch during the space shuttle era. And Artemis will have an orange one, too, but they made a few changes. You'll have like this blue V coming down the front and whatever, but it's the same pretty much. <laughs> so the pressure suit is used for emergency situations. Uh-huh. If, the, if the space shuttle lost cabin pressure and they have everything connected and on, they have to have everything on because if you have a glove off or your helmet off, that's like a big hole in the suit. Yes. So, it's not right. so you have to have everything connected for it to pressurize. So say they lost, I usually compare it to when you see the airplane movies and a hole getting in the cabin and stuff flying everywhere. Yeah. Yes, yes. So they're losing cabin pressure, right? Right. right. So in the shuttle, they would be able to put on all, all their equipment and it could happen like when they're probably coming back. Right. More than likely. So the suit itself would sense that cabin pressure change. Let me see. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but see that little round silver thing right here? Yes. yes. That's the dual suit controller. That is the heart of the suit. Okay. That is okay. what senses that cabin pressure change and will automatically pressurize and keep them safe inside until they get to bail out if they have to bail out. The second part of it is if they needed to bail out, it's good them with the hypothermia situation because 99% chance they're when they bail out. So they'll land in the water. It can protect them that way too with the hypothermia and waiting for somebody to come rescue them, which will be quick because they have beacons and radios that go off if they have to bail out. So they wouldn't uh, be in the water very long. And then they have a one person life raft attached to the parachute that they can oh, crawl into okay. once they get into the water as well. Okay. So, so it's for emergency situations. We know that they can fly without it. Yes. And of course, if there's an explosion, the suit will not, it can't save you from that as we've seen. Right. But it's for emergency situations. And the reason they started back wearing the suit, because, you know, on Challenger, they were just wearing their flight suits, the little coveralls, little jumpsuit. Right. So they started looking for different safety measures. So they brought the suit back. Oh. As just a safety measure. Yeah. So when it senses it and you say it pressurizes it, it yes. pressurizes it to kind of like normal atmospheric pressure. About 3.1 PSI, 3.1 okay. to 3.2 PSI. So that's so they'll be about they'll be about like 30,000 feet because, you know, they're really up high. Right. So pressurize up and they can also adjust it. It has a knob, but they can adjust oh. it. Oh, but, and then it has a backup on there. It's a little press to test. That's the secondary. So if for some reason it does it, they could push it down and hold it and pressurize it, too. So it's back up to the backup, you know. Right. Okay. Yeah. That sounds very yeah. NASA. Yeah. Yes. 
it's a lot of check, check, recheck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But I tell people, but I tell people, y'all, that I got dumber when I got here, to be honest, because in the military, you have to just remember everything. Yes. It's like you learn it, you teach it, and you just know it. I knew all yes. the forks to every screw on the suit by heart. Okay. And coming to the NASA way of doing things, they want you to read everything in a procedure word for word. I mean, you oh, still memorize it after a while, okay. but you still have to go step by step. And then in the gotcha. Air Force, there's no quality inspector when I was there. I thought I heard they got quality inspectors after I left, but there was no engineers. None of, you were everything. Oh, you wow. Were the, you were the technician. You were wow. the supervisor. You were the engineer, the quality <laughs> control. Wow. So when you put your stamp or your initials on it, it was you. So if something happens, they come into not <laughs> like, those five other people that checked it. It's only you. So you really okay. had to get at your job. Wow. All right. Yeah. So. During your time while you were at NASA, I have heard different stories and yeah. I love uh, all the space <laughs> stuff. How long does it take an astronaut to get dressed? It only uh, takes about five all- minutes with our suit. Really? Yeah. It seems longer when you're explaining it, of course, because you're going step by step. Okay. Uh, but the suit is lying on the floor. And I watch how quick I walk through this. It's lying on the floor. They come in. They already have their underwear on, which are long johns. Right. They, they sit down in the lazy boy. One leg, one leg, one arm, one arm pop your head through, stand up, put your arms out. I go inside and check and make sure everything's nice and flat and smooth. I zip it up, boom, sit down, put your boots on, put your communication cap on, put your helmet on, put your gloves on, and I test them. See how quick that was? Whoa. Wow. Okay. It's that quick. And then when they're in space, they do approximately 20 suited training events here on Earth because oh, we're not going to be in space okay. with them. Right. So they learn how to you know, work with it and how to put it on and without banging up the neck ring and the glove disconnects the metal parts. They don't okay. want to bang that stuff up because you don't want yeah. special neck ring because you don't want to not be able to lock your helmet in place and put your helmet on. Right. So we showed them the proper way to roll it and bag it up in a little duffel bag to stow it. Because after that eight and a half minute ride, they take all oh. of that equipment off and they stow it away until it's time to come back home. Okay. Oh. So we had a suits for launch and re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere only. Okay. Not for spacewalks or anything. So can they put it on themselves or do yeah. they need something? It's a little to more difficult. <laughs> it's a little more difficult. So here on Earth, once again, we help it to make it a little more relaxed for them. Uh, and like I said, we're training them in the process too. We're telling them about everything. And we're not the only folks that train them either. There's a lot of other people that they spend time with with training. Right. right. So we just make it easier on them by while they're okay. here. Okay. And we don't want them to damage our equipment so bad. <laughs> <laughs> because they, you know, ah. they, they're not thinking about it being like, you know, they're going to have to go in. I always right. tell the kids, astronauts got long toenails because, you know, they can puncture holes in the bottom of the suit or, I mean, oh, not, not just okay. the metal parts, but the bladder part is kind of like, in my book, I refer to it as like a bicycle inner tube because we have to patch it. It's like a, an inner tube. Okay. You know, yeah. in it. And then when it gets too bad, we have to change the whole bladder out. And that's really the suit itself, the bladder, because that's what the zipper is attached to. Oh, wow. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, it, it, it gets, woo, it gets, yeah. <laughs> I never thought about how many fragile parts of the yes, suit. Like very. you were just saying the bladder, and a minute ago you were mentioning the metal rings that yes. have to connect and lock into place. Exactly. I never really thought about bent, how fragile it could be. Yeah. Like uh, another example I use for the guys, when you're, you hit a curb with your car and you hit your rim. The rim. Yes. And it gets bent, and now you got to yes. leak from your tire. Right. Same thing. They get a they get a bend in it. They won't be able to connect it. It's not going to connect because it's warped now. Right. It's Which so then, we teach oh, them wow. how to be gentle with it when they pack it. Like when they fold the arms in, even something simple as that, it's going to hit the metal, the, the heart of the suit, the controller. That's metal. So oh, try to okay. turn it and roll it so it's not metal to metal when you fold it up and put it away. Wow. It's little so, simple stuff like that, you know, yes. that they don't think about. They're so just going to stuff it in a bag if we don't tell them the right. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean. <laughs> That's how I pack. I don't know. Yeah, and then when they get ready to come home, then they can't. Oh, why, why my helmet won't connect? Well, because you done banged it into the wall five times. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have different sizes for different people? Because I've always wondered about that. Because, you know, astronauts don't come all in the same sizes necessarily. Some are really tall, some are short, you know. Very observant of you, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> I've met a few yes. astronauts and I've seen, you can tell the height difference there. Yes, they do come in different sizes. And I'm glad you brought that up because the very first thing when they get assigned to a mission, they have to come see us over uh-huh. at the crew escape equipment department and do a fit check, oh. which is where we all week will ahead of time. We'll have their street sizes, right? Right. 
So we sure. go by that to just get different sizes out. We kind of guesstimate what sizes they'll need. So we have right. some different sizes out. They'll come in and put on their long johns. And we have to figure that out because they have regular long johns and they have the liquid cooling garment. Oh, right. That cold water run through. Right. Like okay. their air conditioning because they don't have regular air conditioning, of course. Right. And so they put that on and then they come in and we'll, like I say, we'll guesstimate. We have to do anthropometric measurements. That's a big word. Huh? That is a big word. What is that? Can you explain? Thank you. Them, you know, like a tailor measuring them, uh, seeing how long and wide and all that stuff to figure out what size suit would best fit them. And of course, with women, we have the curves and swerves. Yes, So it's a little do. different. You know, we got to accommodate <laughs> that, you know. Yes. So they'll come in. We'll do a fit check and we'll walk them through everything. We'll explain everything to them. That's like our first meeting with them, with the astronaut. Oh, wow. First time they get their suit tech is then for the fit check. Okay. And they'll come in and we'll suit them up and we'll probably go through the whole thing, just like they're getting ready to go to launch and test them and, and pressurize them and everything and come back down and be like, well, when we pressurize you, something else we have to think about when you pressurize it with all the equipment on. Yeah. Or glove while you're sitting there with it depressurized and you put the glove on. It looks all oh, that fits good. And then you pressurize them and it, it kind of moves away. Oh, so you have to take all of that into consideration yeah. when you do your fit check. You can't just do it while they're just sitting there in the chair regularly. Right. Pressurize because right. things change. So they got to be able to still get their fingers all the way to the tip. To so grab they stuff. switches and stuff. Yeah. Oh. So wow. you have to think about okay. that too. And then also on the suit, this white hole down right here. Yeah. The reason that is there. It's for the pressurization part. It's called a helmet hold down. Perfect name because that's yes. what it does. Okay. So before we pressurize them, we have to pull the lower part down first. And then we grab the top and pull it all the way down. So they're like punched over in a knot. And you're thinking, that's very uncomfortable. Why, why did you do that to the astronaut? Yeah. <laughs> when <you see them. laughs> but when you pressurize it, you know what happens, right? They stand back up. And if we don't pull it down, guess what's going to keep going up? Boop. Then the helmet. So that holds the oh. helmet down. No you pressurize. So it just looks like a big white. Yeah, just like it's decoration, down. right? Yeah. But it holds the helmet down. That's why you have to pull the bottom down first to get the first section. And then you grab the top and pull it all the way down. And we train them and we'll have them do it. We don't do it all the time. We'll tell them, go ahead and pull your hole down there. So they got to get used to it because we're not going to be with them in space. Because right? they got to do right. it all by themselves. Exactly. And if they don't pull it down, they'll know quick when it starts pressurizing. The helmet's going to come up and pop them in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> they learn the hard way. <laughs> so they have to pull it all the way down. And some of them, you'll see them forget sometimes their eyes get big while we're pressurizing. I just I just keep going. I'm like, I told you to pull it down. I'm just pressurizing it. And they'll, say, oh, no. they'll start trying to pull it down. But once it's pressurized, it's hard. You can't pull it down. So you got to catch it before we get all the way fresh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I tell the kids we're like their mom. We're like their mini mommies. I'm just picturing this conversation happening with real, you know, astronauts that are, they have been the top of the pyramid their whole lives. And all of a sudden it's whap. Somebody gets bonked in the nose and you're like, see, I told you. (laughs) I don't know. So even being Galactic Space Geek, Jeff, I really didn't know a whole lot of these intricacies. Of the spacesuit. Is there something else about the spacesuit that's kind of like hidden knowledge that most of us don't know? Uh, so with the Air Force suit, they had a face seal in the helmet. Oh, okay. 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 And that was the, the pressurized point. So from there all the way back. But with the ACES, the Advanced Crew Escape Suit, I got to remember to say what the acronyms mean. <laughs> Advanced Crew Escape Suit is what it ended up being at the end, ACES. Instead of LES, which was launch entry suit, okay. but it's still a launch entry suit. They just changed the name. So in that one, instead of the instead of have a face seal, it has a neck seal, which is a lot more comfortable, actually. And oh, I don't think okay. people think about when they see that black part. I don't have a picture of it. The black part inside, like when they have yes. like, you see this black part right here, that's the yeah. neck seal. So okay. That is so much more comfortable because having it around your face and then that kind of restricts your vision too when they have it around their face, like oh, in the Air Force. Oh, and yeah. And they have oh, small okay. little aircraft and they're so, kind of looking around. It's like, you know. But it kind of looks like a black turtleneck, right? Yes, it, it exactly. Goes, That's except, the neck seal. But you're mm-hmm. saying that like sucks on to their yeah. neck? Yes. Yes. And it's the size oh. of their neck. So they have to, it's stretchy though, but it's still a little hard to pop their head through. So they have a cap called a, it's a Teflon cap called a skull cap. Okay. Okay. Option to put it on or not. So it doesn't pull your hair when you go through that neck seal, that rubber neck seal. 
Yeah. Because it's the size of your neck. Even though it's stretchy, you still uh, grab your hair and, you know, you got to push. And a lot of sure. the astronauts, a lot of the guys, oh, it's just like being born. I was like, you don't remember being born. <laughs> 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 so okay I, cut up because you're with them a whole year right or more and sometimes you have the same astronaut on another crew so you already got a great relationship and tickle each other oh yeah right this is like your buddy you know so nice. i'm curious have you ever done this like what does it feel like does it feel oh, yeah. weird to be it's like often. pressurized what does it feel like when it does and that and we ask everybody to do it so you'll know what that crew member is feeling like because yeah. when we're testing them while they're suited they have, when we get up to the pressure, maximum pressure, we tell them to take a breath and hold so we can take our leak rate. And so I hold because sometimes you just be flipping switches and forget to say, you go ahead and breathe. And they're like hitting on the, oh, go ahead and breathe. Oh yeah, oh yeah, now you can, yeah. Yeah, because we're in charge. As the two techs, we're in charge. They have to do what we tell them to do because we're testing their equipment and you know, I could put itching powder in their underwear. They better be nice to me. <laughs> but but I mean, does it make you feel you, weird? Does it, it give you like a, a you can actually then when I was pressurized, I could pull my arm like all the way back because it's just big and open inside. It's like oh a, wow. Like a oh, you mean like out of this like yeah, inside I could the pull suit. my arm into back. the suit. <laughs> oh, this oh. pressurized so it's gonna stay that way, you know? Because we have to pressurize it and test it wow. without the crew members in it. Right. Make sure it's good before they get in it. So it's not okay. on the table and it's pressurized like that, like. <laughs> Like, so it's this empty suit, but it's arms and legs. Yes, are the arms out. and legs are out. And it's like, wow. the leg, when, the, when it's inflated, the legs have a little bend at the knee. Because if you remember, they're lying on their backs. And, you know, when you're in a yeah. chair, the legs are bent slightly, right? Right. So right. they have an automatic little bend in them to make it that much more comfortable as possible. I mean, it wasn't meant to be cute or super comfortable. Right. <laughs> but we try to, you know, try to do as much as you can. <laughs> right? Sure. So they're lying on the pad like three hours before they launch. They come in and get right. some. Is it pressurized before. the whole time? They're no, 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 no. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> no, only okay. when we test them. Only when we test them. <laughs> but they can pressurize themselves. So when they are waiting for launch, mm -hmm. how soon before launch do they go ahead and pressurize? They don't have to. Oh, okay. Uh -uh. That's just for emergency purposes. Oh, gotcha. Okay. All right. But we have to make sure it works. So that's why we have to pressurize them before they leave. So when you guys see them, if y'all ever watch Launch Morning, yes. when they walk out waving to everybody, all the photographers sure. are there. Yes. And the silver Astro Van is there for them to get in. Yes. They just left the room with us. They oh, just, okay. We just suited them up and tested them and made sure everything was good. And if you can recall, they come when they come out, they just have on their suit and their boots. Yes. The right. harness assembly and all that stuff is out already at the pad in the white room. And that's okay. the room that's right before you walk into the shuttle. That's the white room right before right. they walk gotcha. across into the. So we have a bag, like a like a bowling ball bag. And the helmet goes in there with the gloves and their communications cap for each crew uh -huh. member. And we okay. take that down prior to them doing their walkout. After we test them, we'll go ahead and bag that up and put it down in the Astro van. So when they walk out, they don't have to carry anything. They can do their pictures. They can wave. <laughs> they can wave. Cry. Yeah, they don't have to worry. <laughs> See, we don't, we, they don't have to worry about nothing. We even have a picture of a little astronaut for each crew member. And it tells you where they like their pencil, which pocket they like their pencil in, which pocket they like oh, their- Oh my goodness. Uh, it's, that, it's that serious. Cause some guys like it in their leg pocket, lower right. leg. I'm like it in this pocket, the arm pocket. So wow. it's that it's that detailed. We have to know everything about that crew member pertaining to their crew escape equipment. Wow, that yes. is cool. Now, with the fact that you just said just before that walkout, because I think every listener can picture that walkout in yes. that right now. Yes. I'm going to go back on YouTube and find a whole bunch yes. of those videos. And I'm going to look down the hallway and see if I can see Sharon's head popping out the door. <laughs> waving it's by. one picture, uh, Jeff, on STS-78 when I had an all-girls suit tech crew. The only time we ever did that. Before 9-11, we used to be able to stand outside right by the rail where they walk out. But after 9-11, right. then we weren't allowed to anymore. They had okay. the orange parts and everything there. But you will see me, biggest day. I'm right there high-fiving them when they walk I out. I would call it. <laughs> you're you're going to share that one. And I, I, need, I need to find that picture right quick for you. I, you're going to find that one and share I'm going to find it. I'm going to find that picture. But anyway, it's so awesome because they're just regular yeah. people, nice and sweet as pie. Like I said, because I can mess y'all up. Y'all better be nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We had the best time. I had so much fun with the crew members. They were cool. Oh, that's awesome. 
So now I want to ask you about your book because you oh, wrote. Yes. We a, almost forgot about it. You wrote a cool book about suiting up with an astronaut. So tell us about your book, Sharon. So I always wanted to write this book, but while I was working there, I was afraid it might be too much red tape, you know, and uh, oh, yes. you can't say this or you can't say that and stuff. So right. I put it on the back burner and we know how the back burner is. It burns stuff up. I forgot. About it. <laughs> <laughs> that back burner. So after, you know, the space shuttle program ended and it ended a lot of our jobs, I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. And then again, here I go. Well, I want to do this, this, and this. I done sold Mary Kay. I done did everything, right? <laughs> so COVID. Remember I told you COVID made a lot of authors? I was yes. Like, nothing but time now. Let That's me how we started the head. podcast. Yes. yes. COVID. It wasn't like I had to think of what to write. So it took me less than an hour to actually put the pencil on paper and write the book. Wow. And getting the illustration wow. done is what took the longest. Yes. Because it's the same thing I did when I worked there. They allowed me to take an actual suit and go out to schools and go out to community. Events. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And then pressurize it, let the kids ooh and ah and take pictures with it and hopefully pique their interest to work with the space program, you know? That's fantastic. That's very I cool. A, I had a ball. That was the best. That was more fun than going seeing the shuttle launches because after you see a couple of shuttle launches, it's like, eh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. So, what's the name of your book? Suit Up for Launch with Shay, right here. Oh, that's my girl. And so it is based on some mother daughter conversation. Okay. And little Shay wakes up and wants to play dress up. And she oh. thinks about what she wants to dress up as. And of course, she lands on astronaut. I was like, everybody. Of course. Saw I would everybody be saw me. that coming. Right? Ah. I would be that. Yeah. Yes. And so, mom, being a former suit tech, says, Well, let me make this a teachable moment. Before you suit up, I need to tell you all about that suit. Oh, that's and awesome. So she okay. walks through it in a kid friendly way. I don't know, Jeff, did you get a chance to read it when we were there? Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's really cute. You'll like oh, it. And like I, I love said, it. A lot of parents give me great feedback. They're like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And it's just, it's lovely. I just, and I love reading it. You know, I get all into it. If you if you ever it's, see me reading, it's fun. So do you have a website or where people can go learn yes, more about I this? I do. It's my name. Just right at the top of my book here, www.sharoncaplesmcdougal.com. We will have the yes. link on the yes. website and our well, please, yeah, please kids website. Order it from my website and also subscribe. And I'm on all social media platforms. So please go follow and subscribe. That would be amazing. Yeah. So, oh, this has been so much fun. So now we are at the time in our show where we ask our guests to give our listeners a challenge. What da, da, is da. your challenge, Sharon? Hmm, let's see. Maybe it'll be something about space suits. What do y'all Oh, uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> I thought it might have been inchworms, but. <laughs> so what do you guys think about designing your own space suit? Oh, I think, oh, that, would, I like I think that would be fun. Yeah. yeah, we've all seen NASA and now the SpaceX suits. So how, oh, yeah. would, you, how would your design be different from the current space suit? Okay. Oh, I like, I like that. that. I might have to do this one, right? Yeah. I, I might like I might have a, a secret pocket where I keep there things you know. too, right? Oh. Yeah, they already have a lot of pockets, so you can put one wherever you want to. Yeah. And don't forget yeah. this part. Don't forget to include all the systems that you'll need. Remember, I kind of talked right. about some of the different parts on the suits. It's yep. not just one inclusive piece. It has pieces and parts that come off the suit that make the yep. suit work. Yeah, we have to take those all those little pieces off and fix them first and then put them back on the suit, integrate it on the suit. So make sure you think about that part, too. Everything else that'll be needed. I like this. I I I like it. Good job. (laughs) (laughs) This is going to be so much fun. Well, Sharon, it has been an absolute delight to have you on our show. Thank you so much for being on Solid for Kids. Thank Thank you, you. Sharon. I had a ball. It was blastastic. (laughs) (laughs) love that love that wonderful thank you what a fascinating conversation even as galactic space geek jeff (laughs) there are so many things going on with that spacesuit what the astronauts do with it how they are learning about it and training with the spacesuit technicians like sharon and the whole idea of they may bang it and cause a little scuff that would cause a problem for the astronauts. There is so much going on there, Jen. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, to remind everybody, these are the pressure suits. So these are not the same suits that they wear when they go on spacewalks. 
But these are the, you know, these are really just as important because if, you know, something happens during launch or re-entry, these are the suits that they wear. But I think it's so cool that this was her career, right? First, she worked with Air Force officers. She worked on the U-2, yes. you know, pilots that flew the U-2. And now yes. she worked with astronauts. And there's so many amazing stories I'm sure Sharon could tell us. But she's also was a very lovely person, so I'm sure the astronauts enjoyed working with her. So what about that challenge? Design your own spacesuit. I want mine to have pockets, right? Like pockets. And what do you want yours to have, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> and she did mention that it was already going to have pockets. Yes. I like the idea of having more ways to connect things externally, ah. like, you know, like three or four different GoPro connections <laughs> where you can attach that GoPro to the side of your helmet, to your shoulder, sort of like the Apollo astronauts where they had a camera right on their chest, there almost like go. a body cam. Yes. I like the idea of a lot more connections, but I want to see what our listeners think especially younger listeners still in school right now about what a spacesuit that they might grow up into to wear to go into space would look like and what they would have connected to it. Exactly, yes. So if you draw a picture of your spacesuit, please share it with us on our social media. We are at Kids Solve at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to check out our website, which is solveforkids.com. We'll have information about Sharon's really cool book, but also some cool images of her dressing some very special astronauts that you just might recognize. So make sure you check that out. Definitely going to recognize some of those astronauts, and you may have even seen a famous photo that she's in that comes out every year. Jen and Jeff will be imagining what our future spacesuits would look like. We hope <laughs> yes. you're doing the same. Until next time, you'll hear Jen and Jeff on Solve, Solve It, it for, for Kids. kids.